I bought this light to replace another one that I've got. In fact, I've done a video for that one and it was a repair on this one. It was a fairly good deal and I thought I'd purchase, but what happens, it doesn't come with any instructions, which is a bit odd. So, I mean, it gives you various information about adjusting the brightness and seven modes, but no instructions and even using the QR code, I didn't see any PDF download for how to use it. So it's a similar design, but this time we have two buttons on the top. So again, quite nice because you can just replace this with AAA batteries. So easy to come by. You can use rechargeables, but the output of the light is not quite as much, of course, due to the voltage difference. But um, yeah, to use this is a bit of a play and hope with the different modes, but this is what I found out. So for this one, uh, you've got your on button and a second button here. So to go into full power mode, press it once. And then what you have here is you have both LEDs illuminated at full brightness, and then you can turn it off again by pressing that same button. To go into wide beam mode, press it twice. As you can see, they've only got the right hand one here going, and this is more of a wide beam. And then off again, press it three times. And this is both LEDs lit, but it's in a low power mode. And then again, off again. And it always goes back to full power as soon as you press that, no matter what mode you're in. So it doesn't remember your last mode. And what this also does is when you press to go to full brightness, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it actually ramps the brightness up to full power over about 10 or so seconds. You can't really see that, but this is to stop dazzling people in the eyes if you first turn it on. But to be honest, even on low power, any LED light is going to dazzle you if you look at it. But So that's a bit of a gimmick. You've also got an adjustable brightness mode within each of these actual modes. So if you press to go on to full brightness, then you press and hold the same button. You can see we are now cycling between, I think it's a, uh, what does it say on the back? 110%, yeah, 10% to 100. So what happens is you're going up to 100, you get a flash and then it goes down to 10 and a double flash. So there's the flash, and it's cycling down, double flash, and then back up again. Um, it's difficult to get to the maximum because you have to kind of time where the flash is. And I can't see any reason for that. That's a bit of a gimmick. Why would you ever want like 40% or 70%? You either want full brightness so you can see what you're doing, or you maybe want to have the low mode so that you're saving battery power if you know you're going to be out for a long time. Anything in between is just a gimmick. You can also go into any mode. So if I go into, say, the wide mode, you can also, again, press and hold the same button to change that one to low or high. And in fact, comically, you can even go into low mode, and then you can ramp this back up. Just to really confuse things. But uh, yeah, so yeah, any mode you can go in and adjust by, again, holding that button, but it doesn't remember what you've selected. Because if you go into low mode, ramp it straight up, and then switch off, go back into low mode, you can see it's back there, so. You've also got this button here, and all this does is cycle between red, press off, Double press gives you flashing red. That could be good for on the rear of a bike, for instance. Off again, and then three presses gives you green, which I think is supposed to also be good for night work. It gives you more detail in night over, say, a red light. But they're quite powerful. As you can see, there's quite a lot of light here, just from that one. Um, also, if you go into full power mode and then bring it down say to the lowest mode and then switch off switch back on again as you can notice it doesn't remember that either so there's no memory function on this one 
Uh, if you selected, say, a 30% brightness and it was perfect for you, as soon as you switch it off and switch it back on again, you're going to lose that. So it's going to go back to full brightness because there we go. If I press and hold, you can see it's now cycling again. The only other thing on here is a low battery warning. This LED will flash or go on red when the batteries are low. Nice headband, comfortable to wear, well adjustable. You do get batteries with it as well. So these Energizer batteries came with it, which was nice. And they are actually Energizer Max, if that means anything. So at least they're a good quality battery. Branded. Nice adjustable headband to tilt so you can get a fairly good angle on this one so very good to work with uh, let's count the modes so we've got one two three four five six so what's the seventh mode full power and then wide beam and then red green obviously and flashing red and then you've got What's that one? Low power is going to be one of them. And then something in between. Do they, perhaps they class the adjustable dimmer as another mode? Possibly they do. So, yeah, if anyone knows, let me know. But that's all I found on this one. It's supposed to be 85 meters beam. IPX4 is good because you want to be able to use it in rain, etc. Um, this one unfortunately has quite a yellow light compared to previous ones. So, um, if I can show you this. So you can see it's actually quite a yellow colour, which I don't like. I like a nice white, clean colour for the LEDs. But you can see it is definitely brighter than the previous one. It's supposed to be 450 lumens, but I don't think it's really there. It might be, but it doesn't seem that powerful. But it's definitely a good beam there. There's the wide. And then if we look at the low power. So, yeah, there's the difference. But yeah, quite a yellow light. So it depends if you prefer that or not. Something to, to think about. And I thought it would be good to get a replacement for this one should this one die. Um, this one is nice and simple because you just, as you've seen on the previous video, you cycle through your different modes and you only have red, maximum, minimum and off. That's all you really need. And in fact, I've got the classic here as well. This is a really old one now. Um, I can't remember when I bought this, but this is years and years ago. And you can see it's all stretched. So I've lost the, uh, the headband on this one. And unfortunately, you can't replace it. Still a good tilt mechanism. I've lost the button, so it's no longer water resistant. But with these newer ones, you can actually replace the band. As you can see, you can just pop it out of here. Same with this one. So should your band need to be replaced, you can do that. So yeah, overall, a good torch, but could definitely do with some instructions. But I suppose it's not difficult to work out. So hopefully that's helped. Cheers for watching.